Let's talk today about the power of emotions. The king of emotions or king of emotional expression in the Bible was King David. About half of the Psalms in the Bible were written by King David. Now he's the second king of Israel. He was born, David was born before, uh, it was during a time period where people wanted an earthly king instead of God as their king. And so the first king that God gives them is Saul. His name Saul, which means ask for. The next king God chooses is David, whose name means be loved. And many times people are ruled by what they ask for, like the name Saul, instead of being ruled by being loved, which is the name of David. When you choose to be ruled by what you ask for, you're really asking for it. And you see that in, the, in their lives. And God rejected Saul, which means ask for. And he chose David, which means be loved. And it's just like Adam chose to be ruled by what he asked for instead of being ruled by being loved. Jesus chose to be ruled by being loved. You see, Jesus fell on his face and he prayed and he said to the Father, if it is possible, so he's asking here, let this cup pass from me. But nonetheless, not as my will, but as your will. And you see that in Matthew 26, 39 of ESV. And just like King David, Jesus did not come into power until age 30. Now, King David, he was anointed to be king when he was a teenager. And Jesus was anointed to be king at the beginning of all time. Both of them knew who they were way before the masses ever knew. And their identity was not based on what others thought of them, but what God thought of them. And Jesus was led by God's love, by God's voice. And so I want to begin by first asking you, just, you don't have to answer this, but just think, what is leading you? As you go about each through the day, just ask yourself, what is leading you? Is it love or is it what you ask for? Because you can get pretty upset when it's being led by what you ask for. But, but Jesus knew completely who he was, and he completely trusted God to know what was best for his needs because he was in human form. He didn't have all the, he gave up the godly powers that he had to live in human form and live in a complete obedience relationship, demonstrating the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. And part of being love is being real. And you saw that with, with Jesus. He said, look, if there's any other way, let's do it. He was, he was being truthful. And you see that also when you read King David's Psalms, many times you see this pattern of expressing his emotions. And he would usually express how he felt by saying something like this, God, when are you going to hear me? When are you going to listen to me? And you're thinking, oh my word, what? You're talking that way to God? And because he had this loving relationship. But then David would express what he knew for sure about the character of God. And, and hear me, this is the same way with any good, strong relationship. He would then go and say, but God, I know you hear my cries. I know you can be trusted. Now that runs contrary to what David felt. And many times in our life, that's how it is. And I call this pattern the feel real pattern or reveal to heal pattern. And it starts with listening to your feelings so you can speak out what you feel. And that's part of being real with, with whoever you're in relationship. And, but then you cast out what's not real. What's not real about what you feel. Then live out what is real. And that is from God, from God's perspective. It's from who God is. And what you're doing is you reveal to heal, to fill that void that's in you, that's in me, and you want to fill it with God's love, God's way, his truth, his life. And it's based on who God is. Remember, you were made to be the image of God, a pure reflection of God's will and character. So your, your role is to let God shine his light in you 
so that he can cast out the darkness and the fear that holds you back. So how many times in your life have you had a bad day? You know, what makes the difference between a horrible day and a great day? For many times, it's our perspective. How we feel tends to override what we know is real. And our God has given us these God-given emotions. They're either they're neither good nor evil. They're emotions. Yet they are instruments for life change. They're indicators and gauges of the condition of our heart, our mind, and our soul, and, and our perspective. We saw that when we talked about the fruits of the Spirit. Those are many of those are emotions. And if your heart and your mind is focused on evil or that someone did to you, then what flows out of you is evil. And if your heart and mind is focused on God's thoughts and God's words within you, then the image of God flows out of you and onto people. So it's important that we protect what we project because people can detect and they will also reflect back to us whatever is flowing out of us. So I know, you know, we all know, we feel real when we speak out and we act out how we feel. You know, I, you know <laughs> but it never satisfies. And it's only until you reveal how God feels that you truly can come alive and feel alive and feel real. For that's what you were designed to do and to be, and that's the image of God. So your God-given emotions create the energy to get things in motion. And, and I think of that word in motion, the first letter is E, and I think of being energy. And it gets things in motion, and, and, and it causes this flow that makes things go where they're supposed to go if the emotions are aligned with God's will. And to get things in motion, you use this, I call it the emotion will. And I'm going to put this chart up behind me so you can see it. Um, and you can Google emotion will. It's, 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 you know, all over the Internet. I don't know if you can see that in the background. But, yeah. So what you do is you use these, and especially uh, Jordan as a, as a writer, emotion will is vital you know so what you do is you, you feel this feeling of anger and and then instead of just calling it anger you pinpoint it down and i wish i could see the screen a little bit better on here but you know it, it's more than just anger i'm frustrated and one of the things that i did um i don't know if i've already put this on the recording but i was extremely upset and and on a scale from one to 10, it was like a number nine. And I was talking to this insurance company and I told them that I said, I said on a scale from one to 10, 10 being outrageous rage and, and, and just uncontrollable rage. I am at a nine right now, but out of respect for you and respect that, 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 um, you know, this frustration is caused by being passed around by, 10, you're now the 10th person I've talked to at this company trying to get this resolved. Uh, I'm not going to take it out on you, but I just would need, at this point, I need to talk to the president of the company. Well, they, they ended up sending uh, two managers to talk to me. And, but it, it was kind of using the emotional will. I could not tell them. You know, I told them it was rage that I was feeling, but I would not let them feel it. And so, and that was, that was using the, basically what we call meekness, you know, or using that, the spirit of um, patience <laughs> with them. It's one of those spirits. And, um, and so King David was the master uh, of, of, when you look at his Psalms, you'll see it. You'll you almost think he's schizophrenic. He's like, where in the world is he come? Where, where, you know, <laughs> this guy's talking like uh, his enemy are sitting at a table in front of him. You know, there's times he's like, uh, you don't hear from me, God. Then the next thing you know, it's like, but I know I can trust you, God. I know that you are there for me. So I want to just open up the table for you guys uh, to, to talk about anything that I've talked about and, um, and, and just maybe even share a psalm or something that is spoken to you. 
and what it means to you and 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 just just to show this pattern of feeling real is so vital i mean i just cannot tell you and i, I know we'll, before i begin that open it up i just want to say it, it also works really really good in relationships because a, a spouse or a girlfriend um or you know a significant other that cannot or even just a friend cannot deny what you feel they can only deny you know the facts you know as far as look when you say it this way this is how i feel when you said this to me it made me feel like this but then you back it up with saying but i know that's not your heart intent you would not purposely tell me you wouldn't purposely say that to me to make me feel that way i know that's not you when you say that you disarm the whole situation and it becomes basically it's your problem uh, help me but you're going to them help me fix it does it i don't know if that makes any sense but it, but when you go to god and i don't know if you, you know this or not but this is this is so important when you get upset with god about what's going on and you make it personal like david did look god i don't think you're listening to me god i don't think you're hearing god i don't think you see what's going on then he goes and says but i know you do i know you see and i know you care i know you can be trusted um he first gets out the junk that's in his trunk He's being honest with God. And I used to not do that because I'm like, that's so disrespectful to God. But the reality is God already hears it. He always sees it. He already knows it. It's for you to reveal what you feel so that you can get the healing that God wants to give to you. And, and so you get the junk out of the trunk. This is what I feel. But then you back it up with what you know is real about the character of God. And also, when you're doing that with a spouse or a girlfriend or whatever is to, to say, this is what I know about you. This is not you. This is the way I'm upset right now and stuff is not because of something that you did. It's just what you did that how it made me feel. So it's my issue. Help me with it. So that's a whole different ball game. And, and I'm being truthful with that because now if they really did purposely mean to hurt you, then that's a whole different ball game. And they need to confess up to it because it's acting out of their character out of the character of who they're not so but let me just open up the tour the door for you guys to just speak into me what you're hearing what you're seeing and i'll start first with jordan <laughs> well there, uh for me there's there's always two different feelings I get whenever I'm trying to find like what what is real and I know sometimes we're like imagine you get cut off in traffic there's two feelings that really don't come to your mind when you get cut off in traffic and there's two feelings are either love or peace and for those two words when you really think about it they're actually quite similar when you feel love true love that's real you're almost at peace and when you're at peace you feel i feel pretty loved right now it could be by anything if you like, like you know do anything but yeah when you get cut off in traffic uh there's a couple verses that always help me even when it's like this shouldn't be real this doesn't feel real you know i don't like the way this is feeling right now and whoever cuts you off and that person who cuts you off, uh, one verse I always go back to um, is John 15, 12 to 13, which is, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. That's one verse that doesn't really come to mind, does it, when you get cut off in traffic? No, definitely not. Yeah, but it, it should it, come it, to our mind. It should come to our mind. And then uh, this one can go into relationships. It can go into anything. And it's one we've heard a million times. And it's, and it's for God so loved the world, but he gave us one and only son. Uh, they have believed in him to try their everlasting life. I mean, that that there should ultimately just take away our whole problems when it comes to not feeling either wanted or not feeling like things are just real, the emotions we feel. It's kind of like a smoke screen. I mean, you kind of have to see through it sometimes. You know, what does smoke do sometimes? It blinds what we see. But I think for sure those are two things that come to my mind. Sure. 
Yeah, and I, you know, it's it's um, it's not uh, it's not something that that we can self generate to, and that's the frustrating thing about it. That's why it's so important to you know the person cuts you off, you know, acknowledge it. Look, uh, that's very frustrating. <laughs> You know, you know, that's a, you can pull out the anger wheel, but it's not while you're driving. Yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> makes me irritable and agitated that they just pulled, pulled in front of me like that. But then you, you say what, what could be real because you don't know their situation, but what could be real is that they just didn't see me or that they're in a, a major hurry that they got to get there because it's life or death. We don't know what's going on. And it's so, it's so funny because it's a coping mechanism that I do personally that drives my wife crazy. Cause I, I will, um, I'll, 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 I'll come up with all the, you know, she'll come home complaining about something and, and then I'll come back with, well, maybe they're going through this. Maybe they're going through that. That's my coping mechanism. And she comes back with saying, you're taking their case. You know, you're supposed to be angry with me, <laughs> not, not defending them. And I'm like, Oh, you know, and, and but it's my way of processing things. And, um, and so I've had to learn that. And it's so important. Don't, don't discredit what someone's saying is, is go along with them. You know, this, this, this emotional will that I was talking about, you know, help them clarify what they're feeling. Cause if they can clarify what they're feeling, then it will help them communicate better on what, you know, what they're praying for, you know, it, you know, what to pray for, like the word anger, um, you know, there's rage. And then from rage, you go to, to either hostile or hate, <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, are, are you feeling rage right now? No. Are you feeling that exasperated? Yes. I, and then you're probably just frustrated. Yeah, I'm, I'm frustrated. So, you know, and, but it, acknowledging how you feel, but then saying what you know is real based on on God's character, you know, like you just said. But here's what I know is real. God calls me to love people, even those who offend me, and even those who I feel are against me. He's called me to show love and grace and mercy. And so, And then sometimes he tells you to pull out a whip <laughs> and toss over <laughs> the money changers tables and stuff like that. So... Um, but yeah, you're right, Jordan, right on the mark there that, um, and, and once again, emotions are the energy that gets things in motion. So they're not necessarily bad things, but they are called just like the wind. The wind is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but if it's hurricane force, wind, <laughs> that's a bad thing. If it's, um, but the wind, just like in a sailboat, if you harness that wind, it could get you to places that you would never have been able to get to before without that wind. And that's what emotion is, is an energy force that God has designed for us to harness. And we've got to figure out how to harness it well. And, and part of harnessing it is giving it a name. When you give it a name, it gives it power and authority in your life, and it helps you clarify what you're feeling when you don't give it a name, uh, it, it, it pushes you around. You don't even know why you're acting the way that you're acting. And so, um, yeah. Uh, and anything else you guys want to say about, um, the power of emotions? Uh, I oftentimes think that maybe we lose, uh, our God confidence and we're confronted with situations that we oftentimes just always think, well, we'll just solve these issues without actually uh, knowing that God's always uh, been in our, have complete control of everything that we're doing. And so we try to do things ourselves. I think through uh, Matthew, it's pretty evident that, you know, we need to have a stronger faith and uh more of a selfless attitude toward things and always remember that God's always got our back to basically continue to build up our, our God confidence. I agree. I agree. Because I mean, you look at King David and you look at Jesus, you know, um, they didn't act out of the identity that they had. 
you know, both of them were chosen by God. Both of them were called to rule. Um, it's so easy for them to have given up. You know, Jesus first, when he did ministry in his hometown, they, they're like, isn't that the carpenter's son? They didn't say, isn't that Joseph's son? They, they, they said, and, and it's typical man talk, you know, it's like, oh, what do you do? We try to size you up by what you do. And, uh, oh, isn't that the carpenter's son? You know, and so he was able to do very little miracles in there. And if so, if he only did was stayed in their hometown, um, you know, and lived off of their expectation of him, uh, he could do nothing. And, you know, it's so, I see that in my own life and see that in the lives of others when we um, let our identity be um, on what other people feel instead of working out the confidence in our identity and who we are in Christ who we are as um, a believer, who we are is in how God made us. So, um, yeah. uh, don't you ever get, don't, don't you ever feel like when you're confronted with a situation that it, it could be one of those situations, just like being in traffic and, and, you know, maybe you're in a rush and you're trying to get somewhere and basically you have to step back and say, you know, who am I, you know, Am I not a man of God? Do I not seem to, I need to overlook these situations and, and basically kind of check ourselves? You know, have you ever been in that situation? Yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> so someone gave me directions to an event and I had it typed in wrong to the GPS got there the address brought me exactly to carabas and the event was not at carabas it was three miles away from there and and then I, finally i got to where the event was being held and the door were locked and i couldn't get in because i was 30 minutes late to the event because it took me uh, you know I, I just couldn't figure out how to get there i was driving all around well if it's not here at carabas that's what the address is maybe it's something around here and and i was so frustrated brian I, I was just ready to to give up and 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 so i was driving out of the parking lot and and i heard in my thoughts just try one more time so i was so unexpected so not expecting anything at all that I left the car door open. I was also mad and frustrated too. And, and I walked to the, um, to the front doors of the building again to open it. And just happened about that time, uh, a person was walking, getting out of their car. And I said, do you know where the blah, blah, blah event is? And I'm not going to mention the event. She said, Oh yeah, it's just around the corner here. This is where we always meet. There was no sign. There was no nothing. It was a corner door with no window, nothing. It just looked like a, you know, side entrance into the building. And uh, that's where they were meeting. And, and I got there and I, I wanted to tell her, tell everybody how frustrated I was and, and why I was 30 minutes late to the event. And um, I just had to keep my mouth shut. I, I did tell them that my GPS took me to the wrong location. And, um, and I couldn't figure out where they were. So, um, but yeah, Brian, that it. Sadly, it, it's something I get tested with all the time about letting mm -hmm. my emotions get the best of me and and try let and harness them. But I was ready to give up. My honest was I was so frustrated. I finally made it to one of the events that they invited me to, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> oh man! But I got there. That's good. And so, well, it is nine o'clock. I'm going to wrap this up in prayer. I'm going to stop the recorder and, um, and then we'll talk some more afterwards. But uh, so it just as a recap and, and even as a prayer, Lord, help us to take the emotions that, that are inside of us that are from you, Lord, to harness those emotions, to get things in motion. And Lord, we pray that when we come to you, that we will be honest on how we feel, but then we will back it up with what we know is real about you and your character. And even if what we feel is completely opposite of how 
your character is, we're going to come to you and tell you what, how we feel so we can get that junk out of our, our trunk. And so you can speak back into us what is real about you, Lord, because we never want to get in a relationship with you where we feel that we have to be fake, that we feel that we have to be so holy that, that you don't have us holy, meaning holy unto you, Lord, completely unto you. W H O L E whole the L Y to you, Lord. And we just thank you so much for this time. And we love you. And we praise you for all that you've done and what you will be doing and currently are working within us through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to hit stop on the record here. Let me figure out how to do it. <laughs> Still getting used to Zoom. So go one second. And...